Hello there, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning and good evening and a warm welcome to one and all of you. And I also greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very privileged and happy to be part of these sessions and I want to thank our God who is doing a wonderful job giving us this time on earth that we are able to do things in God's ways. What, what is all about doing things in God's ways? Many people don't even understand. Yeah, they think, hey, I'm going to church already, therefore I'm doing things in God's ways. I'm fasting and prayer, praying once a week, I'm doing thing in, thing in, things in God's ways. Right? I'm in constant touch with my pastor. We all have the family prayer. We pray before eating food which is nice. All these things are nice, but that does not really mean that you are doing things in the ways of God. Your thoughts are not aligned to the thoughts of God. Your way, your will is not aligned to the divine will and plans of God. That's completely different. And the day you missed it, Mark, it will be too late for you to rediscover yeah, or the day you missed it, Mark, and you're unaware. There are many people who have missed it, Mark. Um, they are convinced that what they had been doing in life is absolutely convincing, and there isn't anything for them to explain to anyone. All that they had been thinking, all that they had been, um, you know what is a decisive in their lives are absolutely fine is what they have been thinking and they have been moving on in life and that's the danger you know if you're a believer in Christ the devil will convincingly tell you certain things from the Bible that yes these are right but it's for you to check with the Holy Spirit ask the Holy Spirit to lead you from the front and if possible make the Holy Spirit accountable. When you put him to the friend, the Holy Spirit is naturally accountable for everything that happens in your life. And this is exactly the point where most of the people, they just miss the mark. Why? Because they put themselves in the front and they do not give that position to God. They do not give that accelerator or the steering wheel in the hands of God. Either you overspeed and kill yourself or you slow down so very much that even a bullock cart is able to overtake you, which means what? With the limited time that has been allocated to you and me on earth, you cannot be dead slow. You won't be able to reach the destiny. You won't be able to accomplish everything that God had predestined for you according to his divine will and plan. What, what, what must be my speed? You need to travel in the pace of God. When God says stop, you stop. God says, speed up, speed up. God says, accelerate, not greater than 50 miles per hour. Do not accelerate greater than 50 miles per hour. That's it. And that's all about life. That's all about leading a very judicious and maybe religious life. Most of you are religious, right? Going to church and being very traditional and wearing certain dress code that has been... Um, what is say destined by your church pastor and uh, so many so so on and so forth right the, the, the christendom there are so many denominations or so many congregations their emphasis is different from one end to the other end yeah logically speaking there shouldn't be so many congregations or denomination we should have been like one church because christ is married to one church is what ephesians chapter 5 says you read uh, after uh, Verses 11, I think. Yeah, you read, you will understand. How many of you are with me so far? Are you doing things in God's ways? What can get you there is the scriptures, the laws and commandments given to you and me, the doctrines, the instructions of God, right? 613 laws and commandments are in the old covenant and 1050 are in the new covenant. Putting together, you get 
you you get somewhere around 1600 uh, plus commandments laws and commandments now someone is telling you oh it's impossible to follow all these rules i'll tell you what can you make the same statement to your government whichever land you are living it's impossible to drive at the speed of 50 kilometers miles per hour no 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 it's impossible because i'm getting late to work and all that <laughs> your license is going to be cancelled it's even more uh, stricter in the um, <clears throat> us soil than in india and europe also right and after that also you violate you will be jailed and after that also you will be violating and you will be sentenced to you know life sentence you will spend the rest of your life in jail you don't make such statements right how about people living in the middle east you go and rebel against your saudi uh, empire or emperor saying that no no these laws are absolutely foolish and i will continue to do whatever i want they will chop your hands and legs and head <laughs> because their laws are very strict yeah they it's coming from their holy quran uh, what they value the most and the quran most of the things are from our old covenant right we father abraham is common isaac is common just that ishmael they follow the line of ishmael uh but then there are a lot of things that are in common the laws and commandments right but they're very strict they still stick to the old covenant they'll stone you to death finished man will you make that statement no when you don't make that statement what it means beloved it simply means that you are following the laws and commandments already and which is not at all very tough for you why because your life is endangered right someone is going to kill you whether you like it or not whether you are willing or unwilling you are going to follow that why because they are going to punish me they are going to throw me into prison they are going to even kill me and therefore i am not going to violate the law of the land yeah and you land up in a foreign country foreign policies you immediately learn and you are very careful especially you land up in singapore you are not going to spit you are not going to throw any waste papers punishment is going to be very severe and you are a drug peddler they will hang you to death yes recently one guy was hang hung to death he was convicted in 2019 and he was hung to death in 2023 four years yeah i'm not saying drug peddling is not a not a crime no no it's really it's really a crime you you're you're pushing so many youngsters in wrong direction right lot of people are going to be killed their life is going to be ruined would you go and rebel in such a country no why because it's going to cost you something terrible but when it comes to biblical laws biblical commandments you don't take it very seriously instead you take it very lightly why because it's just god you know is merciful compassionate slow to anger one category of people they go by this way of looking at god very very compassionate person we can sin any number of times he will forgive and all another category of people uh, jesus grace is there his name is there his blood is there and all that and where grace multi- uh, sin multiplies grace will multiply and it will redeem another category of people they are worldly right it's not possible for us to practice everything that jesus spoke and taught and all that it's not practically possible they use the word practical tense so you have plenty of reasons to say that i cannot live or do things in god's ways god's ways are nothing but you know you abide in the laws and commandments of the bible revelation 20 to 14 the last chapter i think one of the last few verses god made it very clear blessed are those who abide in the laws and commandments of the bible the opposite is what cursed are you curses will cling you yes the devil will be after you the demonic hosts will be after you and up to you to make that choice and god is not going to interfere why because it's your free will you want to do things in god's ways yes it's your free will you want to do things in devil's ways it's your free will and there is nothing in between these two don't mix up yeah if you're hearing some teachings you can be like this you can be like that no you can either do things in god's ways go to heaven or you do things in devil's ways and you go to hell that's it that's why bible is very strict if you're going to work with any men of god for example guys like elisha 
guys like Elijah, very strict. No turning left or left or right. Right? Very rough guys, you know. And likewise, you see people like Daniel, people like Shatrak Meshach, Abednego, Joseph, Mordecai. Oh, they are really having that piety for God. And people like Job, they have that respect for God. What can, see, do not look at this 1,600 plus laws and commandments, but look at that one aspect, respect for God versus the 1,600 plus commandments. It sounds nothing. God, you want to add another 20,000 commandments and laws? No problem. Because why? My respect for you remains unchanging or remains unchanged. And I'm not going to step back. This is what exactly Jesus did on earth while he walked across the ends of the earth. He had shown one thing consistently, the respect for God. All right. Okay, good. So a warm welcome to this episode number two where we have been discussing through this subject, Jesus Christ is returning to earth very soon. And it may sound as if it's like futuristic tense. Ah, fine, fine. 2000 years, he didn't come. Fine. We have plenty of time to wait. No, <laughs> it's exactly the mythology we want to break. That's exactly the mindset we want to break. If at all you had been imagining or wondering Oh, if this is the, if this is going to be the truth. 2000 years, Jesus didn't come probably. And many people have these kind of uh, philosophical teaching or theological teaching. One day equal to thousand years for God. And God is just delayed by two days, man. So what? He's going to delay by another 10 days. Still, it's going to be just 10 days for him. 10,000 years. So don't worry. This Jesus whom you're talking is not going to come that easily, that quickly. Very true. But not before Jesus left behind certain important evidences, important um, events, right, as, as signals, because why? He is compassionate, and he also knew that human heads are really crazy enough <laughs> to assume things in their ways, and he wants to break their craziness, and that's again being very compassionate. Jesus need not tell all of these, but Jesus, when these disciples approached him and asked him, what is, how is that we are going to Find out these are end times. This is the uh, end of the age, right? How are we going to know this? Please tell us, Jesus. Do not leave us in dark. And Jesus felt very compassionate and he said, fine, I'm going to give you a few indications. I'm going to give you a few signals. When all of these are fulfilled, when all of these events are fulfilled, you will know that the time is ripen enough that another generation may not exist. Another generation may not pass by. And therefore, watch out and pray, lest you may enter into temptation. Your spirit is willing, but your flesh, your carnal, your flesh, and the carnal desires, the carnality associated to it, is going to always pull you backward. Therefore, be very careful. Therefore, be very, very attentive to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, look around, right, like a like a warrior who's in the battlefield. Look around. Because the arrows could come from backwards, sidewards, upwards. It could strike you. Missiles and bombs could come from any direction. It could strike you. Yeah, There could be attacks on the ground, on the, the midair or anywhere. Therefore, watch and pray. Because the devil is like a devouring, prowling lion who is going to devour you. He will be just waiting for his timing. Right? And that's why he's always, you see, never ever think the devil is gone forever. When you call out the name of Jesus, even Jesus, when he was tempted for the first time, 40 days and 40 nights, for that, for some time, the devil left him, is what Bible says in Matthew chapter 4. If you read carefully, you can understand. And after that, the devil came, you know, all through his ministries. Why? All through his life. He had that battle. He had many battles to fight. Even in a single day, I'm talking, right? Not, not not all through in, in a single day of his ministry on a single day of every single every single day of his life that's the right English every single day of his life Jesus will have to fight so many battles now collectively put together I do not know how many millions and trillions of battles he would have fought to get there as a lamb without blemish it's not a pill task the devil projected it that way no if Jesus is able to overcome he's saying in my name you ask anything, it will be given. 
but just that your petition should be valid it's it mustn't be crazy enough uh, crazy petitions like you know give me 10 10000 kgs gold and make me the rich man therefore i can give it to the poor no you work hard god will bless the work of your hands and he will make you rich and therefore you you can be a cheerful giver uh, not like you know the heavens will just open and flourish everything right on your rooftop not like that that's craziness pray according to the divine will and plan of god use your brains use your intelligence use your wisdom okay so we are in the times where all these events are completely fulfilled and jesus coming is not going to be delayed it could happen right now it could happen tomorrow morning therefore do not waste your time on any of the petty petty things or silly fights or offenses and any of those and that's exactly what we are reviewing event by event we are right now in the fifth event we are done with wars violence and lawlessness we are done with famine and drought leading to poverty earthquakes and natural catastrophes the third one pestilence sorry this is epidemics and uh, uh, sicknesses the fourth event and the fifth one right now we are dealing for some time now it's not going to finish that easily there are a lot of a lot of things that we have to review from the bible this is all very detailed teaching comprehensive study therefore you are our, our, our thought processes like this we want to convince you thoroughly that your life you cannot take it lightly you got to ensure that you are a very serious christian now serious christian means not always walking with a frown red faced and all that and moody gloomy and all that not like that you can you will still be very cheerful you will be still uh, be doing the right things in your life you will be a very happy person you will be very uh, you will be a person who is filled with peace and prosperity don't worry about all that right that's a different projection given by certain pentecost you are very spiritual you have to wear torn shirts and anyway people are wearing torn shirts and torn jeans <laughs> <laughs> some of the richest people do that so that's a wrong example yeah you always need to keep your face like a camel's face in you know, a long faces and you cannot smile if you smile then also it's a, you know it's a sin and all that don't go to that extreme neither to this extreme where grace multiplies sin multiplies grace multiplies do anything you want watch pornography no problem lie with a prostitute go to jesus and ask him to forgive no problem grace will grace will multiply and Jesus blood will cleanse you don't go to this extreme or that extreme live a very balanced life and that's the kind of teaching what we are portraying here the fifth event is rise of a power associated with aggression and fundamentalism about aggression there are two types of aggression positive and negative aggression and we are reviewing negative aggression positive aggression we reviewed already you don't have to go anywhere to review positive aggression look at the life of jesus analyze his life that's enough you will know what is positive aggression simple all right negative aggression is where we need to really really review carefully why because many of us are assuming that we are not aggressive or many of us have a different variety of definition for this negative aggression and they say uh, they are not part of it they exclude themselves convincingly no no that's where we are really telling you you are also part of the negative aggression or not i mean we are not judgmental but it's up to you to judge yourself and come to a conclusion negative aggression is tightly coupled with destructive fundamentalism it will lead you to this towards destruction and you and whoever is following you it could be your own wife your child your uh, church members maybe you are an elder in the church or you are the pastor of the church you will lead every one of them uh, you know 10 blind people following one blind person all of them will fall into a ditch jesus made the statement all of them fall will fall in the lake of fire you are in deception you are blindfolded therefore jesus is very compassionate to leave behind lot of teachings whereas positive aggression is coupled with constructive fundamentalism again jesus is a very good example there and we are we are going to fundamentalism after a little while but i want to spend enough time in this concept of negative aggression where people have not really thought through or analyzed enough that they are able to understand and perceive what is this negative aggression so few sessions we have just kicked off uh, negative aggression um, we had been reviewing the basics of negative aggression beloved and especially proverbs 26 is 
is definitely a heavy lifting um, um, chapter and from there we handpicked certain examples during World War II. Military psychologists have induced something called as negative aggression that these guys have gone into violence, right? Every war is like a, it, there is no law and order when it comes to war. Whoever fights the best, they win the war. That's it. <laughs> they have certain rules uh, of the, of the if, if the enemy surrenders, don't kill him, jail him, right? These are all being formulated by the United Nations, UN, and they follow that principle or that law. And not only now, I think always they had that um, that law, wa law of the war, but there is no law, or law and order, nothing like you know, uh, since this guy didn't carry a pistol, you can use only a knife or something like that. No, <laughs> Whoever has got the best machineries, they are going to capture the other one. That's it. And they're going to kill ruthlessly. And that's called as violence. And that's the negative aggression, which was ingested in the minds of the, in the minds of the soldiers during World War II by a lot of military psychologists. Yeah. Uh, Hitler's uh, kind of you know preaching uh, to attract the soldiers would be very aggressive and that's passive aggression right negative aggression so in their definition passive aggression can include behavior such as verbal ang ambiguity you call it as verbal ang ambiguity or mixed responses mixed feelings mixed emotions right avoiding responsibility and uh, you can blame others and uh, forgetfulness to avoid an obligation, uh, complaining spirit. And uh, these are all the things that will just get associated as part of your passive behavior. Right. I'm just prefacing because I told you in the previous session, I'm going to take you to the new covenant. And we're going to review carefully what is the new covenant talking through the subject of negative aggression. All right. Now, I'm just still prefacing the context right and blaming finger pointing and uh, gossiping grudging gumbling grumbling and hatred and sledging and slander all these things are considered to be the passive sins that are right inside us which we fail to discover often and that's the reason i'm explaining this now you're already in negative aggression which means what you're on the devil's side this is not enough then read 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 9, Colossians 3, 5 to 9, Mark 7, 21 to 23, 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, um, Romans uh, 1, 29 to 32, Romans 6, 13 to 20, and uh, Ephesians 4, 31, Galatians 5, 17 to 21, um, Titus chapter 1, verses 5 to 9, and Revelation 21, 8. If you read, you will know the different nomen, or you will discover the different nomenclatures of this Passive aggression as a concept, very, very important. You don't discover now, now or never is a situation, right? And uh, unforgiving spirit, no love for one another. Your love, the, the last days, the love of men will grow cold. Their mind will be, minds will be very dull. You can't even understand the basic definition of life. That's why, you know, th there is no love for one another. Love, love is there. It's a kind of a lustful love. That's called as prostitution or adultery, right? Or intentional inefficiency, avoiding verbal or emotional intimacy, not trusting one another, manipulation um, of words and controlling ability or controlling or dominance, looking for dominance. Yeah, that's the biggest problem today on earth. Right. The very reason for violence and wars is because of dominance. U.S. wants to have dominance over Iraq and a man. Saddam Hussein said, no, I'm not going to let you in. And immediately they declared war, calling out all sorts of allegations against Saddam Hussein that he's having nuclear weapon and stuff like that. But nobody knows what is the truth. Ultimately, you see U.S. entering inside Iraq and invading and 20 years or almost they kept Iraq under their control and dominance, right? Just that U.S. is more powerful than Iraq. What if Iraq was not more powerful? Th those days, Babylon was the superpower, right? King Nebuchadnezzar. And today, these days, Babylon is nothing but Iraq, 
if if it was to be the case like for example 3000 years or 4000 years ago or 3000 years ago roughly it would be iraq over us not us over iraq so as i told you people fight for dominance and that is also part of negative aggression right and uh, artificial humility is also another factor that this is all being discovered by psychologists therefore it is very very important for you to understand this you have a lot of hatred towards a person but the moment you meet them how are you brother my sister how are you doing oh, come home now let's have dinner together and inside you will be burning red hot how how how, how would i love to see this guy dead right now hmm. there are so many people especially i'm talking about brothers and sisters in christ yeah you too have this problem absolutely a worldly person having this problem is a different topic altogether i won't judge them because they do not know bible right and a backstabbing attitude back, you know you are misleading people misguiding it's nothing but backstabbing you know that if you are going to advise someone to make this choice they are definitely going to fail yet you advise them without any mercy without any sympathy without any empathy because why you want them to be dead and gone you want them to fail you want them to commit that mistake you want them to commit that error only then you are convinced what kind of attitude is this demonic attitude but the actual title or definition would be negative aggression passive aggression you're so aggressive negatively obsessed that you want your own friend your own brother to be dead and gone therefore your pathway is clear this is what exactly cain thought if i'm if i if i get rid of this fellow my pathway is clear and there is no competitor correct as called as the dominance hatred dominance introduces hatred uh, fault finding as a defense against getting too close finger pointing attitude withholding information you can find this in a lot of companies right a lot of uh, fact not factories actually in industries a senior who's been working in that company for a very long time will never share that information with junior yeah you have a doubt come to me i will only answer that much no he will not give him a comprehensive idea of all that knowledge he had what is it gained over the past 30 years how many of you seniors listening to me will agree that it's an investment of your company in you you are an asset to the company and you are supposed to be the limelight of the company leading others to victory and success and not securing your job and position yeah the more you are going to train and build others the more you will grow up in your ladder you won't lose your job that's exactly opposite the more you are holding back information you are letting the employer down you are not building the successors so what happens the information is not widely spread people know very less of your job and you are the only person who knew everything and what if you are sick for a month or two uh, what if you have a personal emergency the employer will incur a heavy loss because you have not trained the successors and jesus never did that mistake he always trained the successors that's why you see the 12 people turning the world upside down all the one became the devil he was still able to find another successor his name is paul the apostle 12 people yeah which means he trained them so very well he gave them so much of knowledge he built their knowledge and gave them information and you won't see that happening today right the reason is because passive aggression is the reason negative aggression negativity that i will lose my job selfish spirit it's called a selfishness i keep it all to myself yeah and showing displeasure by not conforming to expectations or standards always frowning and insulting people and being very rude a newcomer or a new joiner who enters inside our company you people almost rag him or her isn't it whenever they ask something ah yeah go and find out go to this website you read you will understand not like that sit with them take a piece of paper and explain it to them you don't you lose nothing in fact you are the brand ambassador for your company you know that like was you are the brand ambassador for christ the more kind you are they'll see christ in you 
who is this gentleman i went to 10 people no one explained but i went to this guy he sat down he dedicated almost the whole day and he did his work after the or, or like an overtime what 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 mere kindness unusual kindness where did he get this from yeah you have an opportunity to represent jesus isn't it right i can go on and on like envy and resentment of peers who succeed um or you know you are very you are very jealous and uh, what to say obstruction uh, creating obstructions not allowing people to succeed or sabotaging the plans right or um or any task assigned you always frown and all that so i am talking much from the work orientations right and all that is related to work yeah because why all of us work these days if you don't work who will pay your bills who will give your give you food to eat right therefore all of us work so at the root of these behaviors is an unresolved anger there is an unknown frustration there is a undiscovered disappointment and that is nothing but the negative aggression that was built in you by the devil over a period of time this did not evolve one overnight probably it took several years several decades and now it's like a fat layer which is blocking that artery you have to go for an open heart surgery if the artery main artery is having that block right and it's not possible to um induce that uh, what is that uh, uh, uh stent stent right stent or something like that they induce it through your nerve and all that right and it's not possible because it's gone uh, beyond that level that's the state of many many born again believers in christ it's gone beyond that control it's got beyond uh, their reach and researchers have found that uh, no first of all at the the root of this behavior is in this undiscovered frustration and frequently from childhood and adolescence right after they get into the adulthood and researchers have found that individuals exhibiting such passive aggression uh, trades often began doing so due to a power struggle with a parent it starts at your home yeah the the very place where you live with your own parents because why your parents are always questioning they're always finger pointing they do it for your good but then some parents are re- really rude don't do that teach them in a very kind way the children will understand and when that primary relationship is dysfunctional the child of a harsh or a intractable um, parent finds other ways of expressing himself ways to even this you know even the score or level the score without doing anything that really crosses the line if these patterns of exhibiting anger become ingrained they carry through into adult relationships and occupations and you know it gets extended to every single place they are going to travel but it began at home therefore parents listening to me listen to me very carefully parenthood is an important thing yeah people sitting at us um, or european soil yeah they, at the age of 16 you know they are almost adults and they walk out of your home but then you have a very good time golden opportunity to spend time with your children until the age of 8 uh, 16 or 18 in some countries right um, good example is moses moses mother had those five or six years until he grew as a little boy and then he was handed over to pharaoh's sister and uh, he has gone grown in the palace in those five six years she ingested every possible thing that she knew about this god of israel right and uh, all the promises given to abraham everything and then she also told you are the deliverer why because god saved your life miraculously and i know my son my boy you are the deliverer however you will go to palace but don't forget forget your brothers the thing very thing that she told even after he became an 8 year old man that thing was the thing remained in his heart so it's a golden opportunity right it's an important responsibility for every parent to save their children from negative aggression and they become the 
normal way of dealing with things that make the person uncomfortable or if unreasonable expectations are put upon him okay so latent anger becomes the lens through which the individual sees the world the lot of anger in a person's heart because why he did not get to study what he wants to study i mean his educational qualification he did not get to work of what he wants to work he did not get a political party whom he wants to rule this country yeah he did not get a friend of his choice he did not get a wife of his choice he did not get or she did not get a husband of his choice they did not get a children of their choice oh you have so many justifications and that's why i'm angry recently one road road rage happened very very silly thing um it happened in delhi i think um two guys came and they kind of collided their shoulders collided two two wheelers and uh, it became an argument and both of them fought very badly both of them were dead and when they spoke to the family members why these people got into such a terrible fight looks like both these guys who didn't know one another were going through so many failures and losses and and uh, when they discovered their frustration was carried all the way from their childhood because as i told you they did not get to study what they want to study their education was against their will and many things the moment a little war or a little verbal uh, war started or the little spark was ignited oh every frustration that is, that was right inside them they poured upon one another they they invited he, he, one another with heavy blows it's not a joke but you you see how 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 dangerous and how serious is this passive aggression that is building right within you that's exactly going to be the last days men, men the love for one another will grow cold there will be no compassion no mercy before even kicking another person or before even attacking another person did you ever give a thought about his family does he have a wife or does he have a children does he have few children or couple of children or does he have any commitments on earth what will the family do if this guy is going to be probably is the only breadwinner this is called as compassion no but you don't think anything at all how dare he spoke like that and immediately this guy kicked him and that guy took another iron rod and bet him and this guy took a stone and bet him very badly on his head and both of these guys died and the reason is not one and the reason was something else or multiple reasons that was kind of you know building up in their hearts it was accumulated don't do this and paul specifically counsels fathers not to provoke your children to wrath in the book of ephesians uh, chapter 6 and verse number 4 i would just um talk a bit about ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 and then um we will close this and in our next session we will continue provoking the children not to provoke their children to anger what does it mean i've seen many fathers and mothers teasing their children in comparison to their siblings look at this fellow i don't know whether he was born for us or maybe the baby got exchanged i have heard one of the relatives making the statement or they would say such a dirty fellow you idiot look at your brother yeah or you 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 nasty fellow you lo- look at your sister and something like that you know they keep um provoking this child to anger and what happens is that kind of hatred builds in that person and and who is the number one enemy number one enemy is a sibling it happened a true story in kerala i told this before also uh, there was a 5 year old boy i think he is still alive and uh, he had a newborn or i think he's a 4 year old boy a little one toddler he is still a toddler and a new baby was born and uh, and uh, uh, it's a baby girl and everyone 
came to their ho- homes and they were you know once upon a time they used to play with this little boy and they and he got the fullest attention and all that and now they are all going towards a newborn baby that's a general intention right nobody cares him uh, or or nobody bothers him or nobody cares for him and all that and he always kept observing this and that envy towards his sister or you call it as passive aggression you know naturally was born in his heart and their parents also did not pay attention to this right and one day he found that the baby was sleeping and his parents were away doing something in the kitchen or something like that he silently grabs that baby and there was a well nearby he drops the baby right inside the well and that's it and when they inquired and they found out this boy has thrown and the reason was he is in the juvenile home he's been arrested by the police and he's in juvenile home he's given certain treatments now whose fault was this parents fault or child's fault parents fault they should have taken care of this because this did not evolve in one overnight probably few months it was burning in his heart likewise children insulting their grown up children uh, sorry no parents insulting their grown up children you know this guy good for nothing i gave him a good education i uh, you know kind of arranged for an interview no he doesn't excel anything he doesn't have intention to live uh, and he is unfit to live on earth and all that the guy commits suicide and he goes to hell you are also going to hell because the reason for his suicidal attempt or his suicide where he lost his life is you his blood is in your hands and god is going to require an account for inducing that negative aggression right inside that child so parents parenthood is not a joke it's really really important and he gives a very important commandment uh, ephesians chapter 6 verse number 4 fathers fathers means mothers also parents do not exasperate your children this is coming from niv version exasperation is what uh irritation mixed with annoyance um or i would say irritation mixed with uh, invoking anger right or uh, irritation or annoyance mixed with uh, abusing words abusive language yeah you can take it in any tense exasperation do not exasperate your children instead bring them up in the training and instructions of the lord instead of abusing them cursing them yelling at them and uh, get out of my home yeah i've 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 taken care of you all these years and you gave nothing to me in return you is not an investment right you begot the child because it was a commitment that you are going to bring him up for god and that for god blessed and opened up the womb and he gave you the child and it is your responsibility to train the child training up the mind of the child and through necessary instructions and don't try doing that after 18 years or 20 years as if after he's grown up as that adult or that rogue no you should do that from day one and uh, you know a lot of uh, pediatricians uh, you know make the statement whatever you want to tell the child keep talking while the child is in the belly the child can hear sing some nice hymns read the bible verses talk about jesus the baby can hear the baby is able to hear and you both fight like dogs in front of the child and the child gets all that negative attention that negative aggression from you yeah you don't forgive one another parents listening to me or couple is couples listening to me yeah husband and wife you don't forgive one another you don't love one another you are selfish you always blame you always complain you finger point you throw tantrums and have bring up the heresies of the past and how will the child grow in god's ways and at the end of the day you blame i ah, see this fellow he grew like his mother hmm. and the same thing the mother says he grew like his father yes exactly this is the you are the reason that your child has become a drug addict or an alcoholic or a womanizer or an adulterer or a prostitute or anything that you call yeah you all understand what i'm saying that's why you got to train up the mind of your child from the bible through the bible all parents listening to me you know if you want if you do not want a mischievous child that you need to start that process as early as possible yeah now don't tell me my child is already 10 years old it's never too late start it today read bible along with them have family prayers 
have fasting and prayer once in a week together as a family train them if not once in a week once in a month at least and regularly take them to all prayer meetings charismatic prayers and don't force them but tell them the value of those charismatic prayers and the bible studies that is conducted in your church or you being the father you should conduct bible studies yourself for your own child you don't have to depend on your pastor yes you got to read bible and explain for which you got to be well versed in bible if you don't read the bible yourself how are you able to train your child and train up his mind and pass these instructions from the bible and in a way that you can explain you can't read the bible blindly he won't understand anything she won't understand anything your daughter won't understand anything you got to give narrate with examples as how jesus narrated with examples through parables and nice stories a lot of reference bibles are also you know children by children's bible are also available you you pick something and do something about it and end of the day i'll tell you that the blood of your children is in your hands you cannot throw away those tantrums and complaints and saying that you know i gave everything we did everything to this child he never grew up in god's way no don't blame blame yourself you never brought him up in god's ways yeah I, there are few exceptional cases definitely that the very good parents they in, in ingested god's piety in their hearts and they brought them up in god's ways but the child is rebellious right wrong companionship and all that and uh, obviously they did not come in god's ways for example adam and eve they shared many things about god i'm very very confident and they had a family prayer they spoke through the mistakes they have committed and how they irritated god and what god likes and what god dislikes everything they spoke to both adam sorry abel and cain but one became a man of god and the other became a devil's agent correct or not yeah there are exceptional cases what to do but pray pray god can change god can change god can bring changes with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible matthew 19:26 says there are very exceptional cases having done everything now this is this end state of your child very unfortunate but don't give up take heart and pray about it yeah take and read colossians 3:21 it's also a similar paraphrase reference given my time is up uh, we will continue right and how negative aggression or passive aggression is induced in a child's heart you are the reason most of the times my dear parents and even although if you are not the reason you still don't give up don't give up on your child that's a crime it's a crime god will never forgive you don't give up on your child right and don't curse them don't abuse them don't tell them get out of my heart and find a nice railway track and lay your head and go to hell no don't 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 ever make that statement that devil's attitude so as we noted wrath can be open and obvious and also hidden sometimes right inside your heart it's buried and it can acquire targets unrelated to the source as i've given various examples god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have bestowed and uh, truly this session was very very useful to all the parents and all the grown up adults who had taken a note lord we are all have we all have shortcomings at the end of the day no one is perfect before you you are the most perfect god but we can become like you for which we need to go through course corrections oh lord help us and lead us by your side admonish us through thy words in jesus name we pray god bless you please subscribe if you have not we'll start receiving automatic notification and share these channel details with whomever you know and lead them into the life of salvation which is your responsibility and you have another important responsibility to pray for all the ministers of god that's a commandment in the bible pray for evangelists missionaries pastors false prophets false teachers everyone pray for them because a lot of people following them and you got to pray for the leaders in the church elders of the church and also forget not my ministries kindly pray for me also all right and uh, if you have a prayer request don't run to any man of god we keep telling you this go to your abba father in heaven seek the lord from the secret place and he will reward you publicly close your door and just pray to god in the name of jesus and make your request known to him do not be anxious because you need to remember with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible and you also need to have that faith when you pray 
and you need to believe that you will receive what you have prayed because his ears will never be shut for your prayers neither will his hands be shortened right and in the name of jesus make your prayers because why without the name of jesus god is not going to pay attention in my name when you ask it will be given jesus made that statement right and uh, he will perfect all your concerns anything that concerns you he will perfect it matthew 6 5 6 matthew 19 26 matthew 21 22 philippians 4 6 john 14 14 isaiah 51 and 2 and uh, uh uh what is that um psalms 138 and verse number 8 all these verses if you read you will get a very comprehensive idea of what we have given as instructions these are not my instructions these are already written in your bible also as it is written my in my bible right therefore i'm giving you the scriptural references read and god bless take care i will meet you soon in the next session